Gracious God, we give thanks for the journey of our life and the gift of living from day to day. In those times that are most challenging to us, we pray that we would not live as the dead before we die, but be open to our continual resurrection in this life and the next. In Christ's name, amen. Please be seated. Not sure. 
this is pretty. That's <laughs> really quite that. That's the wrong answer right now, is it? Yeah, unless you're a real vehement uh, Seahawks fan. Um, does anybody have a question you'd like to ask? Yes. Will Trump be impeached? Oh. <laughs> Questions about it. 
people had opinions one way or the other. And so they inquired of Paul regarding it. And, uh, and Paul essentially, in so many words, in his first and second letters to the Thessalonians, uh, says that uh, we don't know. We don't know when the day of the Lord is going to come. Nobody can know or tell. But if we persist in being faithful, in living our lives as good Christian people, loving our neighbor as ourselves, loving the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, then it doesn't matter when it happens because by doing those things, we will be ready. And we have nothing to fear. So there's no need for this insider knowledge about the future. That's what Paul says, and I believe it's, it's very true. And then we have the Sadducees, the theological opponents of Jesus who are always trying to trick him up or make him look bad or dumb in front of other people. Pharisees and the Sadducees would do those sorts of things. And they try to trap him in our gospel passage for today with a question about the afterlife and, and marriage as taught according to the uh, law of Moses. And it's kind of weird that the Sadducees would even be thinking about these things because they don't, uh, they really didn't believe in an afterlife. If, uh, if you believe that, they didn't. Um, so they're just trying to play games with Jesus, with this hypothetical question that they give him. And they use the law of Moses uh, and, and uh, bring up a situation in which uh, a man uh, marries a, a woman. And then according to the law of Moses, if, if the man dies without having had any children, then his widow has to marry uh, one of the man's brothers so that uh, the brother can keep the the, the deceased brother's family uh, legacy and heritage going uh, for the future. Sounds weird to us. I have two brothers, I can't imagine doing something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the biblical understandings of marriage. So we have to be careful when we say, I believe in biblical marriage, because <laughs> this is one example of what it was. So what about the situation where this happens uh, with the seven brothers, you know, and, and they all marry this, uh, this widow, and, 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 and in the end, uh, she would have been married to, to seven different guys, so the afterlife, whose husband uh, is she going to have? And Jesus says to them, in so many words, this is a paraphrase, you guys just don't get it, do you? <laughs> they don't. Because the afterlife is something that we can't know. We can't have really any certain answers to the particulars. Sadducees couldn't. And even Jesus couldn't give us a whole lot of information other than basically a lot of what happens here is not going to be valid then. It's going to be a, a whole different thing. And we'll know it when we get there. And so the Sadducees walk away disappointed and probably feeling a little foolish, hopefully. The theme in, in all three of these readings really uh, has to do with our coming to terms with the fact that we are not in control of life. We participate in life, but we're not in control of it. There are so many things that uh, are beyond our ability to do anything about or with. And that's a tough lesson to learn sometimes, especially those of us who have high control needs, you know, the type A personalities. There might be some things that we can control or influence, but ultimately, not all of it. And sometimes we just have to sit there and let it happen. There's a a trust in that, a faith in that, that relinquishing, surrendering, letting go. And what we ultimately do when we do this is we allow God to step in 
and do what God does best. That's what it means to live life as a faithful Christian person. To have that level of trust. And to not have to know all the answers. Sure, curiosity is, is fine and, and uh, we're all about learning, but, um, but we can't know it all. And there are some things that are just beyond our ability to know. Again, that's where God steps in. Joseph Campbell, in his Power of Myth series from the 1980s, uh, was once quoted as, as describing or explaining the, probably the most basic definition of God that he could. And Joseph Campbell saw God as that which is beyond what we know. That which is beyond what we know. The one who is ultimately incomprehensible. There are some things that we can know about God based on our experiences and our prayer lives, and our knowledge of Scripture, and, and knowing and practicing the teachings of Jesus. But ultimately, we cannot fully grasp God. That's where God's power lies in our inability to fully grasp God, to put God in a box, to know God fully. And that's why we have reverence for God and worship God, because God is beyond us. So, let him go and persevering in faith. The Episcopal Church has had a ministry with indigenous Native American people since before there was an Episcopal Church. It actually started with the Anglicans way back in the 1600s on this continent. And we know from our history that, tragically, indigenous people were nearly annihilated altogether. There were, at one point, countless unknown numbers of tribal people living here. Some anthropologists estimate that it might have been 50 million or more at the time of Columbus. In 1890, the U.S. Census counted 249,000 indigenous people 400 years later. We nearly disappeared. And we had our culture, and in many instances our languages, our understanding of who we are stripped from us. But there was one thing that we kept that couldn't be taken. Our spirituality. Our spirituality. Again, our relationship with the great spirit, our God. That stayed with us. And as a result, we're still here. We're still here. According to the latest uh, uh, census, over six million indigenous Native American people in the United States. Our languages are being preserved and taught, and we're trying to get back our culture, but we, we focus on our spirituality, because that's why we're still here. I love what I do, even though it involves a, a lot of travel, and I'm so grateful to be here with you. I want to say to you in the Lakota language, Pelamaya, Pelamaya, which means thank you. And I want to uh, conclude by giving you a Lakota blessing. Again, I'm not speaking in tongues, so <laughs> nobody leave to say anything. No way.